Welcome back to the channel. Today's an exciting video because I'm going to share with you the kitchen, which I've been kind of keeping secret. I moved to London on my own when I was 18 and I got a job in the city. Well, it was actually an apprenticeship scheme. I didn't know anyone in London, just fully sent it on the train, moved down here, rented a place without even going and looking at it. And it was a studio apartment in Tower Hamlets. And yeah, this is probably a 40 square meter kitchen. So my studio apartment was two thirds the size of this. Mad, okay? Just believe in your dreams, people. If you're always looking for opportunities. Yeah, you're gonna find a lot more opportunities than the people who aren't even looking. Anyway, no motivational rant just yet. There's gonna be a lot of those videos coming though. And like in investing, um, personal finance, all things money pretty much, starting your own businesses. So without going on too much, let's let's show you the kitchen although before i dive into too much detail i might actually start out here so you can kind of see a little bit more of how it all kind of flows so as you walk in through the front door i don't know if this comes across on camera but that's 60 foot front to back this was that original door that was going into that uh what we were using as our office and so it had all that horrible red carpet it was a disgusting room and then this was that one that was the multicolored room i'll overlay a clip now but yeah that is ridiculous seeing all of this wood flooring going here and from this angle you can't really tell if there's a kitchen obviously all of this is created the original access to the basement was here we actually um just made a new stud wall just like we did to cover up the doorway there all new stud walls and we created this space here completely i'll overlay a clip quickly now to kind of show you what this was looking like not too long ago um but yeah it's a bit mad to see the difference from back then to now if i just turn this light on quickly so we've got two spotlights in here this doorway is going to the basement and then in here we have a little downstairs toilet which yeah it's just nice it's got a really small little sink that fan's gonna be really annoying oh speaking of the fan this is something i messed up a little bit on so to obviously you got a fan in a downstairs toilet but you need to extract it so i spent ages creating like a flue system running all along here around the steel going under the suspended ceiling getting all the way to over there a lot of work but what i didn't do is i didn't allow enough space for the fan to really hide into the wall so we got this one which is a really powerful fan um but yeah it's a little bit ugly sticks out but yeah it does the job so can't really complain too much and let's be honest no one really cares it's the downstairs toilet okay what this is is it's a hatch and then you lift that up and then below that is another lid. And that is the manhole that we made where all of the waste from all the toilets runs to, um, because obviously you need access to something like that. And I'm really proud of like the, the cuts and obviously how it all flows and everything. Um, that was a ton of work. It's not, not too much fun. In fact, quite a lot of this isn't too much fun, but when you walk in and you see a room looking like this, you're like, okay maybe it was worth all the all the suffering where shall we start so yeah obviously the same flooring running throughout the house and then we have got this massive massive island like it's ridiculous and in a room this size it's a bit weird because it almost seems small if you're wondering what these lights do you've got obviously these little globey things that's the LED strip under lighting, which if you want a top tip with LEDs is you can get these kind of like a lens that makes it look like it's a continuous LED because I really dislike where you can see that it's dotted. I think that's a sign of like a cheap LED, which they still look nice, don't get me wrong. But yeah, in my opinion, where it looks continuous, like it's just a solid light. Yeah, I think that that looks money. And then obviously the last two switches are for more spotlight so you've got a zone over there and then a zone here why do you do that well if you're eating like dinner over there you might want to have this off and then you can have that off and then you can turn off whatever the skylights these are the ones that i always bang on about that you just get from ebay are amazing they're massive considering this is a north facing garden so you don't get much sun it's insanely bright in here um, and it's actually like a super cloudy day today. And it's amazing how much natural light you get in here. It's called like qu quartz. It's like 
reconstructed marble. Now marble, I love, I think it looks sick. However, if you spill anything on it, you're gonna cry because it damages it, um, spices and whatnot. Yeah, it ruins it basically. So we went for this, not particularly happy with company we went with, they, they wasted quite a bit of time. They came here, templated it all wrong and then they had to send someone out. But when they do something wrong, that's your opportunity to haggle. So we got quite a bit of money off. But yeah, as you can see, it's got a, um, a waterfall edge, which I wasn't too sure at first. I, I, I don't normally like it, but seeing it here now, um, yeah, it looks insane. And it does just look a bit more expensive and obviously it is more expensive to get this done because they're basically routering um, with a machine the entire edge. And as you can see, that flows around all here. And then we've got about 15 centimeter upstand, which is basically like a splashback uh, to kind of like, if you spill something, it's not gonna go against the painted plaster at the back. Sockets around here, because if you wanna put a blender or something or a charger, you can. Uh, and then another socket we also added, which was down here. This has also got a magnet access panel here. What you wanna do is always be able to have access to all the plumbing because if something were to go wrong or whatever, you need access to it. Um, also got one of the poshest microwaves I've ever seen. Look at this. Ta-da, so unnecessary, but rich. So I like it. This is a larder. Five grand, but we got it for a thousand pounds, which is better. And if you're wondering how on earth a cupboard can cost five grand, well, it's very posh. Let me add some more lights on. So you got up here, the um, glasses holdering place. Um, and then here you got, I think this is for plate stacking, not really sure. And then we actually got some sockets put in there and there. So that allows you to have your toaster, coffee machine, whatever. I actually really want to get a proper nice um, coffee machine. So if anyone knows any brands that aren't too expensive, that are just really good, uh, please let me know. Because, yeah, I looked at some and the, the, the prices may be a little bit upset. But yeah, it's just nice. As you can see, it's got like a chipboardy uh, oak veneer style inside. But then it also does have some real oak. I believe it's oak. For example, these little spindles here, all real. Um, these drawers, as you can see there, are all real. And then obviously these little things. And if you ever see this, this is called medullary ray, I believe. And it's where you cut oak at a specific angle. And then it, it's basically, I think, the most expensive cuts of wood because it allows you to see the grain. And in particular light, it's all very shiny. So when you see really bespoke handmade pieces of furniture. It will have medullary ray showing on it. What else has this got that's pretty cool? Um, it's got these little drawers. The electricians did this, which I think is sick. So basically all your switches that like you're cooking, microwave, wine cooler, fridge, extractor fan, they're all neatly hidden back there. So you can turn them on and off. And yeah, they're not just like chucked in a cupboard, um, kind of hidden, but easy to access, which yeah, I like that sort of thing. So yeah, as I said, this is like five-ish grand. We got it for a grand. Yeah, it's a very expensive looking kitchen, but it, it didn't, it didn't, it cost a lot, but not, not a ridiculous amount. And how does that, well, we did it all. We put it all in. We, this is made by us. I mean, the top of this is all MDF. All of this is us. This is actually like designed for bloody restaurants. It is an insane extractor. I mean, wait, I'll turn it on. I mean, I can feel the oxygen leaving the room. It's ridiculous. It looks the part, I like it, and it, it does the job great. So obviously got an extractor running up there, goes up there, inside the ceiling, and then it exits over there. Well, this is an FU cooker. It's gas and electric, ridiculous. It's so unnecessary considering I literally never use these bits. I just basically make scrambled eggs. So yeah, you've got your, don't know what this thing does, that's some sort of oven-y device. I think this is a plate warmer because you know, you just got to warm your plates because that's 100% that's necessary. Oh yeah, this, lovely, I like that. But yeah, lots of different cooking apparatuses. The splashback, um, that's massive, really like that. So it's exactly the same um, material. Here, bins, in my opinion, are ugly as anything, so. Ta-da, it's like 70 quid for a little slidey bin thing. And it just keeps it out of the way. And, and nice. This tap, it's not any old tap. 
It's a bloody expensive tap. And I never thought I'd spend this kind of money on a tap, but I have because if you look under here, behind all this, that is essentially uh, a kettle that is always on. And you can just make tea and that's just instant boiling water, which also, if you want to do your like, you're washing up pretty quick, pouring boiling water on it. Yeah, it helps. Then obviously you've got your, your normal tappage. I'm really showing you how a tap works. That's a bit ridiculous. But yeah, I, I think it's cool. Got a dishwasher here as well, um, hidden out of the way. I've always wanted one of these fridges, but I've never, never had one. So you got your water, which I just like, and then you got ice cubes crushing, um, which, yeah, it just does all of that business there. That's what the inside of my fridge looks like. Yes. If you've noticed, everything in this house is like chromey, silvery, nurse like down to pretty much everything even to the door handles and that is something that you might notice that we try and continue in our houses is we try and like make it all look as if it was all done at the same time in a hotel now that sounds a bit weird i know but i watched a video probably like five years ago of this guy who designs hotels like the really expensive like five star ones and his whole thing that he does is he wants people to basically, when they get there, feel like every single thing was thought out. So it's like chairs there, you might be on your laptop. So you need to have a socket right there. Oh, if you're wondering, um, we had to make a post because obviously that area is not supported. And this slab weighs 200 and something kilograms. And yeah, if you put too much weight on this end, it could snap. Uh, so that is just two bits of four by two screwed together and then we've cladded it with offcuts from this end panel. Yeah, just more like drawage stuff. Oh yeah, the drawers, I'm not gonna lie, are probably the most over the top extra things I've ever seen. Like they've got bloody glass on the sides and um, this is a Tupperware drawer clearly and that's just got more more glassage going on. If you're wondering what this door leads to, um, this is just for the Hoovers. Um, and just crap that you don't want to, to look at, basically. This is what I've been living off for the last year, this little hot point thing that's like 80 quid. Bit mad, um, considering it's probably like what? So started in October-ish time, like con taking down the conservatory and whatnot, and then to be at this stage now, well, it's done in July. So that's like 10, 11 months, really, to go from back then to now. Absolutely insane, and I'm really happy for how the whole layout of the house has turned out. I mean, you've got tons of room here to get into these chairs. Um, same on this side and you can walk all the way around it. Yeah, it's worked out great. And again, just thinking like, you might want to put your laptop here. Um, you might want to sit there uh, and go on your laptop. You've got three lights here. So if you're going outside, you can turn off a couple of the spotlights and then outside lights, you've got these little wall lights, which yeah, oh yeah, garden, garden's done. Can't, can't really believe it, to be honest. So this is all cedar fencing. I've got a video on how to make it on my Instagram. Did all of that in a day. Uh, cedar fencing's quite expensive, but for the color, I think it's really worth it. Cause, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Grass-wise, that was like 100 quid in like grass that you just roll out. And I was rolling that out in a, in a lightning storm, which wasn't fun. But when it's raining, it's quite good to roll grass out because it adheres to the soil. I believe it was like a six millimeter gap between the slats. Um, I might be wrong on that. Go check on my Instagram video explaining how to do it. And then yeah, the side borders, just some like white gravel, um, needed quite a lot of it. So what you can do is buy cheaper gravel to do the base layer to get it up to the height you want. And then the more expensive gravel, put that on top um, and everyone's none the wiser. So that's a little money saving tip. Massive slabs. These weigh, I want to say like 40 kilograms each. That was a ton of work. You can do uh, like, was it type one, whacker it down and then lay your slabs on that. But I just like using concrete. So I hand mixed a ton of concrete, like tons and tons of concrete. Um, I'll try and put some clips on the screen now of doing that. And then I use this brush in the system for the flagstones. But yeah, super, super happy with how all of that has turned out. And it's like a three and a little bit meter patio and then a three and a bit meter grass area. I think it's like six and a bit meters wide. This is London. This is actually considered quite a big garden. And then I bought lots of plants. You buy it off Gumtree if you want to get cheap plants. I know a little bit niche, but people grow olive trees and they sell them on Gumtree. 
and like other plants so you can get some good deals. That tree there is called like an acacia purple something or other. And it's apparently really expensive and that's always been in this garden. But yeah, I'm super happy with how these doors turned out as well. You can just flick this like that, like that. And then you've got to do this thing here. Push that out like so, like so. And open that one up fully. And then outside, inside, outside, inside. And if you're wondering how much those um, sliding doors were, remember that's one, two, three, four, f five panes of glass. I think it was 2,400 quid. We've saved probably, I don't know, two, three grand on doors. And they're amazing, like you saw that, it's, it's effortless to open. So easy to put in, we put them in ourselves. Um, you just gotta make sure they're, they're level and they're plumb and everything. Over the moon with this, we've got some pan drawers here right next to the oven because that's where it makes sense to have them. Um, some more drawage stuff and then your cutlery stuff. So I need like a, an organizing thing. But yeah, super happy with that. We've also got a wine cooler, which as you can see, it's got a little light, which I like. A socket up on the wall here because I might put a telly up there. Maybe one of those like cool frame TV looking things. So yeah, I think it'd be quite cool because then you've got like the breakfast bar area, which you can't actually see the TV on. So that doesn't really make sense. Oh no, you can get some more bar stools, put them along this edge and then you could watch TV. I'm so happy with this. Like you've got a bloody sofa, this much space, which that's again, like two meters, probably like 40-ish centimetres against that wall. So yeah, it's a huge kitchen. Really, really happy with how it's turned out. Okay, I'm gonna go on a quick rant. The neighbours behind us as well don't like us at all. In fact, the moment I put my fencing up, the woman who previously had been really nice to my brother and me came out, said our fencing looked like a prison fence and it's blocking the sunlight from her garden. Um, which I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing, but she might have a four metre high olive tree and the fencing is what blocks. And also this is the baffling bit. She didn't like the fact she couldn't look into our garden. Well, that's just weird. So yeah, people get jealous, envious, whatever. Um, I mean, most of the people around here are great. There's a woman at the road who comes by. She's heard what like these neighbors have said and she's just like, oh, Chris, they're jealous. Just ignore them. This is called a plinth. It just adds so much. I mean, that's fun doing all of this. I mean, you've got to use like a uh, super glue on one side and then you have an activating spray on the other and then you pull the two together. Something that looks really complicated and scary to do. And it is like when it's with your kitchen, it is, but it's all so doable. And I hope when you're watching this, you go, crap, they've managed to do that whilst doing everything that they have on. There's been so many moments where I'm just Googling things, YouTubing things, sometimes just making things up as I go along. And the end result is this, it's all possible. You've just got to have some vision and then you've got to see it through. And do you know how many times I've wanted to give up during this project? It's unbelievable. Just had the house valued as well. That was pretty mad. And there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do once a house has been valued, um, which I will get into as well in future videos. Next up, basement. First floor. So yeah, don't miss those because yeah, if you like the kitchen, I think you're gonna like the rest of the house. Okay, sweet. In a bit, bye.